Welcome to the new week. Today we are going to be releasing assignment two, three, and four because really it is one large project that is divided into three different components, but each component is worth 100 points and um, will be graded as independent assignments. You can see the updated um, grading format in your grades on e-learning. It is all laid out for you there. So let's go through this. Um, so this assignment is going to focus on understanding, evaluating, and developing 2D design communication. As we found out from assignment one, communicating three-dimensional space through two-dimensional drawings is more challenging than it appears. There are many aspects of design that need to be considered, and it is vital to understand how to communicate, articulate, and read various forms of design communication. All designers strive to communicate designs in ways that can be understood regardless of language, time period, technology, or lack thereof, and or design discipline. Yet every designer has a unique style in how they communicate design through two-dimensional drawings. Use of line weights, architectural lettering styles, title blocks, design standards, color and shading, idea generation, page composition, drawing process, and even the type of paper are all examples of how, as of how aspects um, will differ from designer to designer, resulting in not only universally communicated drawings through maintained design standards, but also the stylistic differences further reinforce each designer's design. For these assignments, we will explore all the elements that go into creating schematic design drawings, including the following drawings, site plan, floor plans, elevations, sections, details, specialty perspectives, axonometric, and isometric. Within each type of schematic design drawing, there are also annotations and communication standards that need to be established and, and maintained. So before I go on and uh, read the task, I want to clarify that um, we already had the lecture one, part one, which was about design communication. And now we will have lecture one, part two, <laughs> which will be going over schematic drawings. And it will explain in detail all of these drawings, why they exist, <laughs> why they're important, and all of that information. Um, and then in class, in our in-class activities or the activities that you will do at home instead of being in class, we will um, do exercises about each type of drawing. Um, you are not expected to do all of these drawings in this assignment, but we are just going to be looking at these types of drawings right now. We'll have in-class activities going over um, all of these aspects. So moving on. The task. Each student has been randomly assigned a designer from the list below. The list contains a sample of designers across time periods, languages, design movements, technology differences, politics, cultures, and communication styles. You will be researching your assigned designer to find out more about who they are as a person, their upbringing, inspirations, philosophies, education, etc. Through that research, you will undoubtedly cover various projects from your selected designer. Select one of their projects to further research through the lens of design communication. So what is the criteria for evaluating a project's documentation through design communication? How will we um, you know, review and be able to judge the success of the project that you will be evaluating in your presentation? So one of our in-class activities actually will be, we will be working through um, in class activities and discussion to create a list of criteria for you to assess your designer's work. So together as a class, we'll talk about all of the things we've learned so far, um, you know, things from our experiences and backgrounds, um, and things we've learned from other courses 
that can help us evaluate the success of design communication. Um, and so each section will create to work a list and then we will have a master list of important things for us to look for and judge when looking at you know the any type of project but specifically you will be evaluating one from your selected designer so as a hint um, remember the design elements and principles including graphic design for those that are in um, intro to interior design and we did cover and we will cover um, design elements and principles more through uh, the lens of design communication in architectural drawings um, in this course. So you will then select a single drawing from your designer to replicate through formal architectural hand drafting. Learning from the masters is a time-honored tradition in professions such as interior design and architecture. So in this class, we are also going to discuss the word master and what that really means, um, where the word came from, why it exists, how it's been used over time, um, and how it's specifically used in architectural design, but also how that word has been adapted to have different meanings in the 18th and 20th centuries um, and even today. Um, and we'll talk about what it means in applying it to your contemporary design practice um, because that is a really important aspect the things that um, happen politically and socially and culturally have a direct impact on the way that we speak the way that we communicate our ideas the ideas themselves and you will um, become more aware of that when you research your designer their background and how did that background impact their career and the project that you selected, um, et cetera. So to complete the assignment, uh, you will then reassess your workspace, keeping the same footprint that you established in assignment one, create a new program, bubble diagrams and redesign your floor plan based on the acquired design knowledge um, from both courses or just this course um, in the same style as your assigned designer. You will also include two elevation drawings. So this means that um, a lot of you found area, you know, really hard uh, ways to <laughs> really like difficult difficulties in drawing and doing your bubble diagrams in your space because it is so small and you have limited resources and um, you have roommates etc so now is our chance to after learning about design up until now um, or up until when you begin this uh, part of the assignment um, you will have the opportunity to redesign your floor plan and that means that you can treat yourself as your own client and say, here's my footprint, you know, the perimeter of the walls. And these are all the things I need. And then you can take that, you create that program, you do some idea generation through bubble diagrams. Um, and then you create a floor plan that better suits your needs. Um, I want to say, you know, your dream floor plan, but we're also uh, incorporating learned information and knowledge and our design expertise. So it's more than just a dream. It's a well-informed, functional um, floor plan that suits your needs. And then you will also draw two elevation drawings. Um, by this time that you start doing this, we will have drawn elevation drawings and gone um, in, you know, to detail about elevation drawings. So here is what you are actually going to be turning in. So the first part, which is assignment two, you will turn it in a narrated presentation submitted as a pre-recorded presentation, introducing your designer and their background information. You will be providing a contextual foundation that will inform why or how their design communicated, their design communication formed. 
You will then showcase a project by your designer and evaluate their two-dimensional design communication from the list of criteria that we established in class. Um, your total submitted presentation should be a minimum of 10 minutes. You can go um, you can go as long as you want, but it has to be a minimum of 10 minutes. And so this is actually due November 16. Um, and so you have about two academic weeks um, to do this. It's on a Friday by 5 p.m. Um, and when I say narrated presentations, I'm referring to the type that I provide as lectures. So I essentially create PowerPoints and then I record them. I do a screen recording and I talk over it. And so you end up with a narrated presentation. So you will also create um, you know, a PowerPoint or whatever type of presentation um, software you like to use. Um, ultimately, you will be submitting a movie. So it doesn't really matter um, the format that you prefer. Um, but you will, you will be providing your designer's background information, um, the origin, any notable events during childhood, um, education, you know, where did they study? Did they even study architecture? If so, where, um, important political or cultural aspects that impact their work and an overview of their career. Um, and then you will select a project that illustrates the designer style and communication techniques. And then you will provide a evaluation of the communication. And then you will also be graded on the quality of you know, presentation, the graphics used, um, the design language that you use and meeting the minimum time requirement. So again, that's due November 16 by 5 p.m. I know that seems soon, but it's really just looking in to your designer. Uh, it's not a research paper, it's just a presentation. And it's essentially, you could spend a couple hours researching them, put together a presentation, select one of their projects, and evaluate it. So it should not take a super amount of time and um, in the event that there is complications with creating a presentation or recording audio or uploading the movie file, um, we will address that at the time. I, chances are these will be too large to submit to um, e-learning. And so we might have to, I don't know if you're able to embed um, your files, but if not, I will create a separate Dropbox, not on e-learning, just a regular Dropbox and share that with everybody so you can save your, your large files there. And then I will embed all of your presentations um, onto our YouTube playlist, which just to remind everybody, it's unlisted, which means that only those with the link can see it. It's, it won't even be searchable to anybody outside of this class. So then we have your assignment three, which is the drawing replication. That will be due November 6th, so a month from today. Um, so first, you will need pre-approval. Once you've found the drawing, um, let me know and let's talk about it and make sure that it will satisfy requirements for this. Um, hopefully, the drawing that you pick will come from the project that you've discussed in your presentation. That's the intention. Um, however, you know, there might be exceptions. So you will also be um, needing to accurately and attentively incorporate the designer's stylistic techniques, including architectural lettering, use of color and shading and title block. So making sure you're, you're really replicating them, not just drawing the same drawing, but when you write the notes that they wrote, write it in their handwriting. Um, use their shading technique. You know, use the colors that they've used, if applicable. If they've included a full title block, do the title block. If they have um, 
you know, title block information, not necessarily in a title block, you will want to include that too. So everything must be formally, architecturally hand drafted using either pencils or pen and ink. Um, or I don't think any other, any other designer has other mediums, but uh, those two things should work for you. I will also be looking at your professional craft, um, which means minimal to no smudging, smearing, or eraser marks. So basically making sure that your um, page that you're doing your drawing on is clean and it doesn't get um, like muddied up, which is easy to do. And um, when you'll be working on this in class, for those that will be in class, and we will go over the techniques of you know, how to avoid getting your arms to not smear. And then um, for submission, so you will submit the physical drawing that you do. Um, you will roll it up. And when I say professionally rolled, um, there's just a specific way that designers and architects roll their drawings. Um, and so when everybody's consistent, um, it's really easy to process them. And also when you open them, they open in a way that you would read them. Um, we'll go over that. There will be a basket in the classroom where you can just put your rolled drawing in. Um, and so again, we'll review how to roll your drawings. Um, we'll do that early on in the assignment because most likely you'll be transporting your drawing back and forth from class and home as we meet. Um, and then as a side note, if you opted to remain online for the course, you will still be creating a physical document um, and submitting in person, unless you are long distance from campus, in which case you will need to either digitally capture your drawing and submit a PDF or mail your physical drawing. Um, and so in terms of submitting in person, you, I mean, it's just basically coming in the door and putting your rolled document in the basket. Our classroom is right by the door. Then the assignment four is the redesign of your workspace. Um, so this will be due on uh, November, I wrote 1020, but really it's 1120, I'll change that. Um, it's due on a, November 20. Um, and basically you're going to be redesigning your workspace in the style of your designer. So now you're using your own um, design, but applying the designer's stylistic techniques. Again, I'm going to be looking at craft. The submission will be the same as above. Um, and then I'm hoping that you will show improvement to your hand lettering, page composition, line weights, bubble diagram techniques, and uh, floor plan drawings. And so the entire package will need to include your cover page, a program, bubble diagrams, floor plan, two elevations, and a title block. So very, very similar to the first workspace assignment, but you will not need to have photographs of your space and your design notes will change based on how your designer notates things. So here's the list of designers. I will let you look through this and find your name. They were randomly selected. And if you really want a different designer or architect that's on the list, I mean, feel free to trade with other students. Just let me know. Um, there's a lot on here. Everybody, I mean, there's so many designers and architects out there. This is just a small sampling. So everybody really did get somebody really great and that has a unique style. So here is the grading criteria. Again, this is actually three assignments. Um, you will have your designer presentation. Um, so 30 points goes towards providing the designer background, setting up the context, and then um, 50 points, which is half of the grade, is on the evaluation of your design communication criteria. 
And then the overall presentation is 20 points. And then for assignment three, the drawing replication, uh, your incorporation of the designer's stylistic techniques is 30 points. The development of your drafting skills is 60 points. Um, and then the successful submission of your document is 10 points. So even though this assignment is based on replicating as close as possible your designer's work, um, most of the grade will be given to your drafting skills. So even if you were to successfully incorporate all the stylistic techniques, um, your drafting skills could still be really lackluster and vice versa. Um, so both are important, but development, development of your drafting skills is paramount. And then assignment four, which is workspace redesign. Um, again, incorporation of designers stylistic techniques, but then development of your own drafting and design communication skills, which is even more important here because it's your own design. So you will be communicating, you know, ideas from your head. <laughs> so abstract ideas, communicating two dimensional, um, is really difficult and you know design and design communication and drafting can aid in that uh, translation and then successful uh, submission of the document so that is what essentially the next two months looks like for us um so oh good i put 11 6 here <laughs> i don't know why it's 10 20. um so again, this is due 10-16, drawing replication is due November 6, and then the redesign of your workspace is due November 20, which is the last day of our in-person classes. So after that's due, you will be released <laughs> to go home um, and you will have your final assignments um, completely digital. So yeah, actually it's going to be a fun one. So I'm really excited for your guys' final <laughs> assignments. Um, yeah, I will be going over this again with everybody this week and um, I hope everybody has a good week and I will see you later, bye.